So today we're going to be covering the top five most fun and unique builds in Elden Ring. Now fun is obviously going to be subjective. So depending on what type of play style you actually do prefer, it's going to be dependent on what you actually consider fun. If you like things like power stancing or poise breaking the most, I do have like whole dedicated videos towards those particular topics. Now in this video, I did try to go slightly off meta. I didn't really try to pick like the most meta and best things that I do normally in my other build videos, but it's still gonna be a bunch of really good builds. I don't really wanna make things that are just average. I still like to min max and actually see high damage numbers because to me, that's really fun. Anyway, let's just get started. First build I want to cover is the dexterity based build using the Urumi Whip. Now the stats for this is just go all into dexterity because the Urumi gets an S scaling in dex. And this is really good because when you pair this alongside some lightning based ashes of war, because those lightning ashes purely scale off dexterity and your dexterity scaling, so it has an S scaling, it's just going to be the best pairing. And the Ash of War of choice is going to be Lightning Ram, which is definitely one of the more fun ashes in the entire game. You just do a bunch of really cool somersaults that actually can do a decent amount of damage and stagger pretty well. And for only 5 FP, you can't really go wrong. Now, yes, the downsides to this is that it is like a longer animation and you don't get any iframes, so you are going to get hit a whole bunch. But being they actually are lower to the ground, a lot of attacks do just end up going right over your head. But the Urmi itself is probably going to be the best weapon in the entire game, which one, isn't really saying much but the reason as to why it's the best is that one you get that slashing damage and you do get the best moveset those heavy attacks just go ridiculously far it basically extends the weapon to this nice poking attack and we're basically just going to be spamming that the entire time so we're going to pair it alongside a charge attack build using the axe talisman and the spiked crack too and obviously have the shard of alexander to boost the lightning ram damage as well now whips aren't going to be the best option because one your poise damage isn't going to be that great so your charged heavy attacks will do less poise damage than a dagger would and you can't do critical attacks either so to counteract this we're going to have a keen infused misery cord in our offhand and it's going to switch to it every single time that you want to get a backstab or you actually want to get a repost of an enemy and we're just going to have this up and infused with golden valve because this is going to result in more damage and more defenses now for this build being that we are going to be lacking some projectile based options we're going to go ahead and use a bow now the bow of choice is going to be the black bow which is probably the best in the entire game because it's a medium bow that gets the lights bow moveset so you can get those cool jumping and landing attacks to get some pretty decent dps now bows aren't going to always be the best option because they just don't get good scalings at all so their damage tends to be kind of mid but it can be a decent option to just kite enemies in one at a time or actually proc status effects at a distance but to maximize the damage of the bow we're going to pair it alongside the arrow sting talisman but if you didn't want to use any bows i'd recommend putting on the lightning scorpion charm or the millicent prosthesis and if you still wanted a projectile option i recommend putting the thunderbolt ash war probably on the misery cord but for almost every single build i always recommend going into 15 faith because you're always going to benefit of just using a bunch of different types of incantations like flame growing strength bestial vitality or some of the damage negation spells but also for this build in particular we're going to benefit of using the electrify armament buff which at lower faith isn't going to really boost with much damage it's only going to be plus 100 but it's still like free plus 100 damage so you might as well but for this build is basically to spam charged heavy attacks, spam your lightning ram, and then sometimes you can actually go ahead and just use the bow to just proc status effects. Now next I want to cover a strength faith based build using the Marika's Hammer, which is probably my favorite weapon in the entire game because it looks really cool and the weapon skill is just so damn amazing. It actually just has a large AOE, yeets enemies up into the air, does ridiculous stance damage. The animation just looks super clean. Now yes, you do acquire it like off the final boss in the game. So if you want something a bit similar that's earlier on, I recommend the Ordovus's Greatsword or the Silurius Tree Spear. Both of them have like very similar scalings. You can actually use it alongside this build. Now, yes, I know holy damage kind of cringe, but these weapons actually mainly do physical damage and their weapon skill actually does scale off your AR. So meaning that you can just go all into strength, mainly do physical damage and your weapon skill will just mainly do physical. And as you can see against bosses that are 80% resist to holy damage, it's still going to be doing decent damage towards them. But we still are going to go into a little bit of faith because you do want to use some spells. I personally just wanted to go into about 30 faith because when you're pairing this alongside the claw mark seal, you actually can get some pretty decent incan scaling. But in terms of the spells themselves, you can just go any which way. You do want to have stuff that covers different types of variety and damage types. So I just used O Flame and Scouring Black Flame as just a fire-based option. Both of them are actually pretty fun to use. And my main projectile option is going to be Rock Sling, which is a nice physical type spell. And it has had Ancient Dragons, Lightning Strikers. It's a big AoE that just does lightning damage because why not? It's really good. And obviously you do have to throw in Golden Bell. Flame grant me strength, and you can actually throw in a health regen spell as well. I went with Blessings Boon. But the main spell we're going to be using here is Scarlet Aeonia, which, yes, is acquired very late in the game and it does take up a whole bunch of spell slots, but it's basically just like a guaranteed way to just proc Scarlet Rot, which is actually going to be very beneficial to our build because, one, obviously the damage over time effect is actually going to be decent because we're going to pair it alongside the Mushroom Crown Helmet and the Kindred Odd Rot Exaltation Talisman. Now, both of these things work very similar. They'll just give you a boosted amount of damage for 20 seconds when you actually proc Rot or Poison on a nearby enemy. And they'll just both stack to just give you 30% more damage. So basically, you start off the fight just using Scarlet Aeonia, you proc Scarlet Rot, and the next... 
20 seconds, you just have 30% more damage, of which you can just like spam your spells, spam your weapon skill, and just end up melting a whole bunch of different types of bosses. Now you will notice that in my back pocket, I do have a Bloodstained Dagger, which is going to be poison fused with Poisonous Mist. Now Bloodstained Dagger actually does have a very decent strength scaling, and when poison infused, it actually still retains an A scaling in strength. So you actually can do some decent damage with it. And it actually does have inherent bleed. So you actually can use this as a primary option if you wanted to. But we're just going to use this to proc the poison so we can just keep reprocking the Kindred of Rock Citation and the Mushroom Crown buff. Because obviously you can stack Rot and Poison at the exact same time. Now as for the rest of the talismans, you want to have the Flux Canvas Talisman for more spell damage. I went with the Carrying Filigood Crest to just decrease the FP cost of the weapon skill because Goldbreaker is pretty expensive at 27 FP, but with the Carrying Filigood Crest, it decreases it to 20, and the Shard of Alexander to just further boost the damage. Now, as for the Crystal Tears, I just went with more Strength and more Faith. Now, you will end up getting more damage with the weapon if you went with the Holy Base Tier, but I went with the Faith Base Tier to further enhance the spell damage and actually meet the minimum requirements for the Scarlet Aeonia spell. But as you can see, there's plenty of cool stuff that you can use alongside this build to make it a very fun experience. Next up, I want to cover the Intelligence build, which is going to be using the Lance, which is a great spear, and we're going to actually have this cold infused with the Waves of Darkness Ash of War. Now, the good thing about the Lance is that, one, it's a great spear, so it's going to have a really amazing moveset, and the scalings is actually really nice. With a cold infusion, it actually gets a B scaling in Intelligence, which most weapons actually only get C scalings in Intelligence when you have them cold infused. So you actually can get some nice Frost build up and actually get some decent AR as well. But as for the Waves of Darkness Ash of War, this is actually also going to pair nicely alongside a cold infusion, because those little Wave Aftershock effects that you actually get with the weapon skill also do proc frost and actually can do some nice damage in a larger aoe now we are going to have the jellyfish shield on our left hand because this is just going to be a great shield that has 100 physical block and with a great spear you actually can block and poke at the exact same time but the main part about the jellyfish shield is that when you use its weapon skill contagious fury it actually does boost your damage by 20 percent for 30 seconds now unfortunately when you actually do remove the weapon so if you actually do want to use the waves of darkness ash of War, you will have to two-hand your weapon which actually will remove the buff which is unfortunate but the main reason we have that is because we're going to have our staff in the offhand which is going to be the carrying regal scepter which is only going to be good at higher levels so if you're at lower levels in intelligence i recommend using the meteorite stuff but once again in terms of spells you can go whichever way you want i just pick the ones that are most fun to me at melee distance i like things like gavel of Hymer, carrion piercer and shattering crystal and probably the most underrated spell in my opinion is crystal release this thing just does so much damage now it is like going to be a very long animation but you do get some very nice hype drama but that damage cannot be understated how good it actually is and as for the projectile options i went with things like rock sling meteorite of Estelle, and shard spiral rock sling can actually go incredibly far especially if you pair it with the arrow reach talisman and the shard spiral spell can actually melt large bosses very quickly and i went with some more ice storm because this spell actually does proc frost very quickly and actually does it faster than every other frost based spell as well and obviously we're going to have Terra Magica, which is going to create a little magic pool that boosts our damage by 35%. But as for the talismans, we're going to have Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman, and the Magic Scorpion Charm. And you will notice that I do have a dagger in my back pocket just to have Golden Vow equipped so it can just further boost my damage and defenses. And as for the Wondrous Physic, we're actually going to have the Intelligence tier and the Magic tier equipped onto it. But yeah, this build has multiple different play styles. You can just spam the weapon skill, just use the cool moveset that the Great Spear actually does get, or you can just rock a pure caster build and use all the different types of fun spells that I have showcased. Now next I want to talk about an arcane build. Now for every single arcane build I always recommend just going into a little bit of faith because the dragon communion seal is just amazing and it makes faith arcane builds the best in the entire game. So you just want to have a little bit of faith to meet the minimum requirements for certain types of spells. But this type of build style is only going to be really good at higher levels. If you're like below level 80 it's probably not going to be the most viable thing. But for this build we're going to be utilizing the venomous fang which honestly is one of my favorite weapons in the entire game and it is a claw based weapon that actually does have inherent deadly poison and it can be infused. So if you pair this alongside an occult infusion you can actually get really good deadly poison poison build up and within a few hits you can just proc poison straight away so obviously we're going to build around this but with claws in particular they just get very fast movesets that hit at the exact same time and the jumping attacks are extremely good so we're going to spec into that now the downside to the venomous fang is that it's the only claw that actually doesn't get 110 crit multiplier and actually does get the least amount of range out of all the other claws as well but it actually can output the highest amount of damage as you can see in the gameplay right now it just shreds things incredibly quickly but for all poison builds you obviously want to have the mushroom crown helmet and the kindred of exaltation talisman to just boost your damage every single time that you do proc poison and being that claws are so good at doing jumping attacks obviously going to go with the jumping attack build using the raptor feathers chest piece and the claw talisman now we are going to have the venomous fang infused with the roller knight resolve which just boosts our damage by 80 percent on the next attack which will just end up making our jumping attacks just do ridiculous damage and we're also going to have the ritual sword talisman for just more damage at full health and the flux canvas talisman to boost our spells which speaking of which we're going to be using the blood flame talons blood flame talons is going to be like a very solid melee based option does some good fire damage and that 
that blood loss build up over time. We're also going to have blood boon also, which this spell, you basically just throw it on the ground and just have enemies just like stand over the top of it. And they'll just end up taking a bunch of blood loss build up over time. And this is just going to be the better version of Swarm of Flies. Swarm of Flies got nerfed way too hard and blood boon is just now the better option because it's cheaper and just can do more blood loss. And when you pair it alongside the dragon community seal, but that has an arcane scaling, it actually does scale the bleed with that. But in terms of the rest of the spells, I went with lightning spear just to have a lightning based option. And obviously being that we have the dragon communion seal and we have an arcane build, the dragon incantations are just going to be really good. Dragon ice is incredibly good at proccing frost, which is obviously going to be amazing. You can just use that at the beginning of the fights. You proc frost, it'll just end up debuffing enemies to make them take 20% more damage. You can have Theodorix as magma, which is actually an extremely high damaging dragon spell, especially if you use that follow-up attack, it's actually really good. Then I also went with Dragon Claw, which is probably my favorite melee-based dragon incantation. Dragon Maw is still pretty good, but I think Dragon Claw is just more fun, just having a double slamming attack that actually ends up doing more poise damage than Dragon Maw. I think it's just cooler. And we're gonna have Grail's Roar as well, which is gonna be a very nice debuff on the enemy to just make them take more damage and actually do less damage to us. And then obviously you're gonna have the traditional Golden Vow and Flame Gummery Strength spells. And as for our Wondrous Physic, we're gonna have the Faith Tier, which is gonna help us meet the minimum requirements of certain types of spells and just give us a bit more spell damage. And we're gonna have the Thorny Cracked Tier as well, which is gonna give us some more damage with successive attacks that we do get with our Venomous Fang. Now, Last build I want to cover is the intelligence and faith based build. Now this is very hard to make like a pretty decent intelligence and faith based build due to the fact that you don't really have many weapon options and a lot of the faith intelligence based spells aren't really that great to begin with also. But you actually can make a pretty fun build alongside with this. Now this one in particular isn't going to be the most forgiving in terms of lower level builds but once you do go high enough you actually can get some pretty decent damage and as you can see I only have 35 intelligence and 35 faith but my golden order seal actually still gets 296 incan scaling which is actually pretty decent and if you checked out my sacred seal video you would notice that the golden order seal is actually going to be one of the better seals in the game but this one actually also does boost the fundamentalist incantations which just involves your ring of light spells and we're going to be utilizing those as well the disc is a light it is actually going to be one of the most underrated spells in the entire game only consumes three fp goes incredibly far can do some decent amount of damage it probably ends up getting the best damage to fp ratio in the entire game and if you actually have the radiant gold mask helmet equipped you actually do boost the damage of these by a further 10 percent but the best things about these spells is that they have a very unique interaction with the Erd Tree grade shield because that weapon skill golden retaliation can actually parry spells and deflect them back into this really cool holy projectile. And being that these ring of light spells actually do return to you, you actually can deflect those ones back as well. And as you can see in the gameplay, the projectiles actually do some very decent damage. Now, unfortunately that actually doesn't scale with faith at all. And the great shield requirement is gonna be 30 strength. So you are gonna have to go into a decent amount of strength to actually wield this thing. And the only way to improve the damage is using the shard of Alexander talisman, holy scorpion charm, and the ritual sword talisman also. Now the triple rings of light spell can also work alongside with this, but another cool interaction that you can use with this thing is that being that the triple rings of light is actually gonna be a larger projectile, you can actually throw it directly at the ground and then parry it that way. If you just want a more reliable way to just shoot out the projectile. Now being that we have spec into a little bit of strength, the weapon of choice that I actually did end up going with is the Magma Blade, which yes, farming for this thing isn't going to be the most fun thing in the world, but once you do get it, it is a very decent weapon. You can do some nice damage with it. And being that holy damage is obviously not going to be the best against some of the bosses in this game, having the Magma Blade can actually counteract it pretty nicely. Now, another incantation that I consider really fun is the Crucible Horn spell. This spell, when fully charged, you can just like lunge from halfway across the map and just yeet enemies up into the air and do some very nice poise damage. And you actually can equip the Crucible Armor Set to just further enhance the damage as well. And obviously, being that we have a decent amount of faith we can benefit of things like flame grammy strength i've actually went with hallow shibriri here as well now this is actually going to lower our damage negation so if you didn't really care for that you can just stick with flame grammy strength but obviously flame grammy strength isn't going to boost your holy damage that you're going to be doing with some of the spells and i did also go with blessings boon as well just to have some health regen but being that we have gone into intelligence we might as well actually benefit off some spells now i did actually go with the galmi's glinstone stuff because this one's going to be the best faith and intelligence based stuff at lower levels now the Prince of Death stuff is going to be really good, but only at much higher faith in Int. At 35, 35 of what I'm at right now, this one's just gonna be the better option. Now cool spells you actually can use alongside this build. I went with Briars of Punishment. This one's gonna be just a nice blood-based projectile. Has some nice tracking, actually has some decent blood loss build up, actually can stagger pretty well. And I also went with Glenstone Ice Crag, which is a nice way to just proc frost very quickly, and it's not that expensive either. But the only reason I use those spells is just to proc some status effects, just in case you go up against an enemy or a boss that is actually weak to those things. But for the most part, I wouldn't really bother using sorceries because your incantations are going to be doing way more damage because the golden order seal is just going to be better. Now, as for the wondrous flask, I went with the faith based tier, which is obviously going to enhance our spell damage and the magma blade damage. And I went with the holy tier as well, which is going to boost the damage of discus of light and golden retaliation. Anyway, that pretty much concludes it for that one. If you do want to see another top five, just let me know down in the comments and also do share your own opinions as to what you consider to be the most fun build. 
Also, please do like and subscribe because I do have some more videos coming along the way. And do follow me on Twitch because I actually am live there doing challenge runs every single day. And there's other random types of Soulsborne content. Anyway, see you guys in the next one. Bye.